Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and today um, I just wanted to kind of celebrate uh, somebody who is sort of a, both a sort of personal hero to me and sort of a, a wider icon I like to think for um, LGBTQ people particularly in the UK um, and a sort of one who's sort of a, a bit less known I think in some ways um, but has a really profound sort of had a profound really profound impact on me and still does uh, now and that is Derek Jarman and um, so he was uh, widely known for being um, an artist and sort of filmmaker um, but also a large part for being really unapologetically queer and LGBTQ in a time where that was really not okay <laughs> you know like it was sort of severely punished by by media by many other people around so uh, Derek Jarman particularly sort of coming out um, and you know making films that were kind of quite explicit um, and, and very very queer in their kind of feel uh, but also uh, you know after he was diagnosed with HIV um, he really had sort of the media turn on him particularly you know he was sort of seen as being the kind of everything that's wrong with um, with the world kind of thing versus a government that was a little bit more uh, sort of inclined against shall we say around the time of section 28 around the time of many many other things anyway all of this is a bit of a preamble to me uh, putting this out especially on Derek Jarman's birthday or you know that what would have been essentially his 80th birthday uh, now so um, this weekend this I'm sort of doing this in two parts this is me filming before I go down to the coast and go down to Dungeness which is where he ended up and um, where he spent his last few years of his life um, and then I will pepper in pictures of me going there so this is a very excited pre-trip Bob um, and there will be sort of bits afterwards when I've come back um, but I really wanted to talk about him as well for his literary output um, so he he wrote a, a number of books um, particularly his diaries which he he used to sort of document his last few years and so I've got two of them here um, smiling in slow motion and uh, modern nature um, both of which really start to detail the last years of his life and importantly during this time as well he um, he's really suffering from AIDS related illnesses his health is sort of failing um, but he has these really beautiful um, books that, that really weave in kind of the experience of being someone living with HIV and um, him as this sort of artist and thinker and him sort of being angry about the state of the world and about queer rights um, and, and various other things but in the meantime as you can kind of tell a little bit from these covers um, he is sort of uh, he, he had a garden that he started growing in um, in Dungeness and this was sort of his final little project almost this area called Prospect Cottage um, and he created this garden that was both really vibrant and rich and beautiful but also set against quite a bleak industrial landscape um, near a you know a nuclear reactor and near all of these other things and there was something about that sort of um, symbolism that he quite enjoyed this idea of the sort of decay next to him and him slowly making things grow um, and particularly in, in both of these books he sort of draws some parallels um, between between that sort of sense of decay and finding hope and his HIV diagnosis and trying to find hope in his last few years um, so really not like the easiest reads at times but he's also just a really um, he's a really fun and engaging writer in so many other ways so he'll be angry at turns and incredibly sad and then just have these beautiful sort of musings about um about literature and about art and about his garden and nature and so so many other things and it's just something that really mean, means a lot to me um two books that i've not got here um are um one one of which is um at your own risk which was a, a much shorter book but was essentially a sort of a bit more of a polemic almost it was him talking about sexuality and sex and how he approached that and how he feels about that as someone who's HIV positive and it's a, it's a blistering and powerful book very very short as well but just one of the most incredible things I think I've read um, and and was really quite transformative for me as well in terms of really seeing someone be so absolutely unapologetic about who he is the other book I wanted to mention of his is Chroma which is a book I read this month and it is just such a beautiful little book um, as I mentioned he was an artist as well and through his art he often sort of you know 
use that as a, as a way of exploring politics as well. But with uh, Cromer, he explores the world through colours. And so in many ways, it feels like a bit of a, a sort of stream of consciousness or kind of overlapping sets of ideas, often with big catchphrases or things that are related to certain colours. So, for example, he might um, when he's, he's talking about blue, he might start talking about the sea or the sky or bringing in song lyrics or blue as a royal colour and all of these sorts of things start sort of meshing over and, you know, at times a bit kind of jarring as something to read. But then as you get closer and closer to the end of the book, and again, a very, very slim book, you realise that this is something quite profound because not only is he talking about colours, he's also trying to capture that magic of colours as his own eyesight is failing. And there are some absolutely beautiful passages um, where he talks about his eyesight failing or about his health failing more generally. And you can hear the desperation and fear creeping into this, this piece of writing because he does not want to lose the ability to see these colours. And in fact, as you get closer and closer towards the end of the book, he starts dealing with the darker colours. Um, and it ends um, on black, um, you know, almost this kind of curtain call, uh, so, uh, yeah, this sort of curtain falling moment um, that is just so beautiful and heartbreaking. And it just, it ends in this really beautifully lilting kind of way, but you just know that there's something so absolutely sort of desperate and heartbreaking behind it all, um, which I just thought was just a, an absolutely stunning thing um and and just really really blew me away just in terms of the quality of that writing um but Derek Jarman himself was also not really one to necessarily give in to the darkness of his time um and you know his books are full with so so many bits of joy and celebration and creativity and it's it's such a beautiful thing to read but that almost makes everything else a bit more heartbreaking and with the diaries we do end in a position where his, he gets to his final moments and we're left with a note that basically says you know this was Derek's last diary entry and as you sort of see the last few the, the um the book does a really great job of showing you actually what it looked like um, as in his, his handwritten notes and you can see how his handwriting is becoming more and more erratic and he's getting more and more tired as he gets sicker and sicker and so the final little parts are just scrawls um, and he can barely make them out or he has to ask his partner to write them down for him um, utterly heartbreaking but I think between them um, between these two between the two diaries between At Your Own Risk and between Chroma I just think it's just such a beautiful celebration of a life and uh, it, it sort of makes it quite sad to think about you know if if he were alive now you know in his now turning 80 what would he be doing how would he have really sort of still been part of queer activism and writing and so so many other things um, so it does really feel like a profound loss um, I will leave this little bit here and I'm going to cut now to hopefully me having wandered around a little bit in Dungeness um, to sort of go and visit. This is sort of like a mini pilgrimage for me, I guess, um, but to go and visit him. Um, I've been Bob the Booker. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye bye.